Hi, my name is Dr. Robin Abramsic and I'm a general dentist in Heath, Texas. I practice with a holistic or biological view and I am here with one of our favorite people ever, it's Michelle Chatham, and I just wanted her to share a little bit about you, about her amazing credentials and how she helps so much the nursing dyads who come to Smile Ranch. Um, my name is Michelle Chatham and I am an RN, BSN, IBCLC. I'm also a licensed massage therapist. I specialize in fascia work and I'm also a myofunctional therapist. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, one thing that we've been talking about is babies who come here and our requirement, meaning they will not be allowed through the door for a thrombectomy unless they have an IBCLC report or, or assessment and we're non-negotiable about that and it's so imperative a lot of people have a hard time understanding why they think we're being unreasonable but really it's about having the highest level the highest standard of care and, and wanting and looking for the ultimate outcome for these nursing dyads and really I wanted us just to talk a little bit about that what are some of the reasons why we would want an IBCLC to even look at a dyad before coming to us mm -hmm. I think it's really important to understand that with really any person who is going to go through an oral function evaluation, tie or not, if there's dysfunction there, that you have a, an evaluation by someone who knows oral function. Now in the breastfeeding um, and even bottle feeding child, an IBCLC is qualified, trained and able to, to evaluate that function. I would just add especially the IBCLC who has had advanced training in the rehabilitation and habilitation of oral function. Absolutely. So more and more we're seeing, you know, uh, IBCLC step up and get this extra training, like for example with Jennifer Tao's class, the master class for the, the dyad, um, um, the habilitation of the dyad, those type classes where assessment um, evaluation is taking place and also good strategy and um, uh, plan, plan, care plans are being developed around the release. So the care that you get pre, during, and post release is really the magic. That's where Absolutely. the good stuff happens. Um, so that the child actually knows what needs to happen and those things are being made sure that they happen. Absolutely. Um, when the child is, say, um, toddler age, they're no longer breastfeeding or the IBCLC doesn't apply, then you want to make sure you've got a myofunctional therapist or a speech language pathologist, someone who understands all of what is entailed in a good oral function exam make sure that that's happened and that that person is following and stepping out in the post-op the things that need to be recovered and what was missing initially. So, you know, the article I wrote several years ago about the, uh, is your baby a tether burger or a tether flow? That's pretty much what we're talking about is, you know, a lot of people just want it to be the silver bullet. Oh, there's a tight freedom, we're gonna cut it, and then we're gonna get X, Y, Z happen. Mm -hmm. That's not always the case. Right. What we have to do is identify what's missing and have a plan to recover that. For any age person, that's even the adult, the child in orthodontics, all of that. So you really do have to have people that can help you get there. Right. One of the arguments that comes up is access to care. Interestingly enough, in the digital age, digital age, we have ways of overcoming that. That's right. Qualified, educated, knowledgeable IBCLCs will do um, Skype consults, FaceTime consults, and the way that they're trained and the way that they're able to assess can be very helpful even though they can't put hands on. Right. Um, and then even myofunctional therapists mm -hmm. now work right. um, internet and remotely mm -hmm. as well. Um, of course, the structural integration part that happens with the actual hands-on piece, we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> um, I'd say that tongue-in-cheek, but um, you know, the, those pieces can definitely put in place. And the reason this is so important for you doctors is, and you and I talked long and hard about this many, many times, and, and even with Dr. Fetzik in Kansas where, you know, I set that clinic up, do not pick up the wand until you're sure that all of those bases are covered. That's right. There are things that are happening and may be happening that might be outside of your scope of practice. Right. And you want that extra assurance 
um, coverage and knowledge and confidence that that child is going to be taken through and right. gotten to where they want to be. Right. You don't want to roll the dice Absolutely. just by releasing that freedom and saying, oh, well, wow, you know, that was, you know, that didn't go well. You know, no, we want to plan for right. success. Absolutely. The genius in it is the strategy. Right. And so knowing what your outcome is helps you strategize. That's right. And then you have these beautiful genius moments of recovering what was lost. That's right. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. So what are some of the other things it could be if, and sometimes it is just a tongue tie. Other times it could be more than one thing. Glandular tissue, hormonal issues. In the breastfeeding or baby. Mm -hmm. it could not even be a tie. It could just be hormonal issues. And I, as a mm -hmm. dentist, I have not been trained on how to assess mothers for these issue so what other things could it be in the breastfeeding baby or bottle fed baby who's having mm -hmm. functional issues what could it be other than a tethered tissue so a scenario that might come up like scenarios I get might be someone brings me their baby and they say we've been to three people and he's acting like he has a tongue tie nobody can find anything yada yada and so you look and it might be a submucosal tie it may not be there might have been a birth trauma or some other type of delivery scenario that is actually working in the body that the baby needs help with movement. Um, and then it might be a breastfeeding issue. It might be a position at the breast. It might be, like you said, um, in a, um, insufficient. I, insufficient glandular tissue. It might be hormonal issues with the mom. There might be a metabolic issue going on with the mom. Previous breast surgery. Breast surgeries. Nerve all damage of, from soul, yeah, shoulder surgery. Yeah, exactly. All of these other things that can happen need to be addressed as well. So you don't want to just go in and do a tongue tie release thinking, oh, that's going to be it. And now, now all of this is going to happen. Right. It doesn't always happen. There, and the other thing that we're seeing too is the level of acuity in these babies that come to us for evaluation is also increasing. That requires broader skill sets and very knowledgeable practitioners who are willing to look at the whole big yeah. picture qualified intakes, deep intakes, they look at dietary inflammation, mm -hmm. all of these other factors you that are coming to, talk about you that. can't not talk about it anymore. Right. We're to that point now with the level of acuity in the children that we're seeing, everything needs to be looked at yeah. and have them addressed in That's that right. way. Absolutely. It's all about ethics. It really is. And you know, and I just, I come in to support the, the doctors as well. And, you know, just honestly, I say, you know, do you really want to be responsible for all of those things that maybe that's not your scope, yeah, that's not right. your thing, so don't take it on. That's right. There are too many people now that are coming on that are getting training, that have more knowledge, network, find them, right. reach right. out and ask someone and get that support. Yeah. If it's not directly in your office, mm -hmm. then have your resources available yeah, because good. they're there. Yeah, so we want to take really good care of these moms and babies absolutely yes. that's first priority that is. above all that's right and you know I respect you know the fact that the moms come in and they want it to be this and they want it to be only this and if you would just do this then this would happen but it's not always yeah. the case that way that's right yeah that's so right. lots of compassion and grace absolutely. this is hard it doesn't matter how you look at it these are usually very challenging mm -hmm. situations and we just want to make sure we're doing the best complete job we can. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I'm going to put her article in the comments and just call us if you have any questions. Have a great day.